Okay, I want to see if I can capture what might be a short move. Not sure just yet. This is the MNQ, September 7th at a, uh, the New York Open. You can see the open price right there, the dotted yellow line. And I've got what looks at this moment like a bear flag. And I've already made my daily uh, target, so I'm just doing a sim trade here to try to demonstrate this. Order found. Entered with three micro contracts. So it's challenged in the open. I like to take my anchored view up and, and seek out the lowest point, which would be right there. It's not necessarily the lowest candle, so I just sweep it back and forth to try to find where the lowest is. That's the way I go about it. This is the, um, that white line right there is the lower standard deviation number one, that DL1. That means deviation lower number one. Here's deviation lower number two. You can see that acted as a target quite often earlier in the day. Here's the v daily VWAP right here, the dotted magenta line. It's uh, 941. This is the midpoint, this short blue line right there, dash line. That's the midway between the a daily VWAP and the lower standard deviation, number one. They're very influential levels. Nine forty two AM A 
move my stop above that VWAP. Oftentimes it'll come up and tap that and then re and return right down again, reverse down. Tweezer top right there. We still haven't violated the long term guppies yet. They're still officially in the down mode. See how it stopped at that midpoint between the two, the, the daily VWAP and the first lower standard deviation? So if you're trading the tweezer, tweezer top, then a break below this green wick, candle with a wick right there, right there would be your entry if you're trading the tweezer tops. Right about there. Order found. Order found. Nine forty seven AM
Okay. Um, came down to the New York Open. And my thought was it might have been just testing that for a run to the upside. Let's see if uh, the open line can defend itself. Another tweezer top right there. My focus is, is a lot on the open line right there to see what price is going to do as it's negotiating with that open level. The dashed yellow line right there. Nine forty nine AM. There's a VWAP here, uh, anchored VWAP from that low, recent low. Okay, who's going to win this battle? It's down at the lower standard deviation number one. And notice how it had come down here in this Mid midline blue line had stopped its progression. Well, that's not actually true because if I back the chart up, you'll see that there was the midline at that point, and price did penetrate it and came down effectively and hit standard deviation number two. Okay, well, let's get back to seeing how price is going to react to the open line, and this could be seen as a developing bull flag right there. So it's it failed to penetrate the open. We've got a, what might be a bull flag. We don't have very encouraging long-term guppies. It's kind of twisted in knots right now. So if it breaks above this bull flag, what might be a bull flag, then we're really taking a, a higher risk trade. But I still think this move down might have been just a positioning for a later move up, and that later could be coming up soon. I don't think I need this anchored VWAP from the past, and I don't need this one. Get that one off. I will, however, put one on this high right there. Let's seek out the high of this, which would be right, right, right there. So the recent move was above this anchored VWAP. And if it can break above that anchored VWAP coming from the top uh, in a convincing manner, then it might be a indication of going long, but we're still fighting with the open level right here. We've got our TDI as uh, baseline is above the 50% level. Green has fallen below both the signal line and also the baseline. Just hasn't been able to penetrate below that open level. 
Hmm. Yeah, well, that's interesting. I got both a volume and a down arrow. Let's just see what that might develop into. Okay, so that was a nice indicator right there. My down red arrow and my my uh, red um, volume, because that's telling me that I had an increasing sell volume and a decreasing buy volume. And it's right at the lo this this little yellowish zone. That's the first that's the first candle of this one minute chart. And uh, that, that you know it's said that that first minute high low range is influential for the balance of the day but basically what we're looking at now is you know price had been f playing around with the open level came tried to make a move above not too convincingly came back down and struggled with it and at the moment it's it's broken below and everything's looking good on my tdi with the exception of the background green so it, it'll it'll turn green on the next, in the close of this candle, it'll turn red. Strong volume to the downside. So this bullish uh, flag failed. And you know, you might say, well, this, uh, let me get this right there. There we go. You might say that flag, that bear flag, would have been something like this. The bull flag, at least at the moment, is inconsequential, irrelevant. So there was the break of the ultimate break of the uh, of the bull flag. We got a lot of uh, uh, tw uh, tweezer tops. So that's the magenta candle. See how this red dot has now moved. It was back there. It only prints the most recent because otherwise the the chart gets too cluttered. So it's still showing um, supportive volume to the downside. Now will this come up and retest that and then roll over? You see, I didn't stick around long for my profits. And I think my maximum drawdown on this twenty-seven or eight thousand, almost twenty-nine thousand dollar account, was it somewhere in the range of seven hundred dollars. But you know, that's uh, I'm pl I initiated the uh, the trade with three contracts, and then added, scaled into some additional ones. And some might people might call that a martingale technique that you saw, but. Uh, and so be it if it is, but I, I'd only do it if I see chart structures supporting me to do it. And you see the positive outcome. So if you're using a smaller account, then you're going to have to scale back on your number of, of contracts. And I've said it multiple times before, the main reason, well, one of the big reasons people fail is they're undercapitalized. They don't have enough money to be trading the way they are. And you're listening to one who's had done that on one of, more than one occasion in the past. Well, the next test would be this low right here, the opening range low. And that prints un until the first hour of the, of the session is over, and then that locks into place and that gives us the initial, what's called the initial balance, the high and low of the first uh, 60 minutes, the first hour. And that's a, that, I'm, I find that that to, to be a critical structure in the chart, the highs and the lows, together with the opening range and the first minute right in there. This is an indicator that I got from uh, Lizard Indicators. And it's one that he has a free one in his library, and then another one that you 
you uh, pay for, a little more robust. So we had another tweezer top right in here, right? And and uh, we're still we're still in a down guppies uh, configuration. And that's ever see that vertical red line right there. Ever since then, that was at six twenty six this morning. Uh, it is an, it in effect has been down. It hasn't reversed up yet. It, we'd get a green vertical dash line if it did. And the guppy moving averages, um, and I'll be repetitive, I guess, when I say this, it, they were initiated by a guy named Daryl Guppy, if you can believe that. Uh, it's funny how people, names, I have a, a good carpenter, his name is Joe Hammer, and that's his real name, Joe Hammer. I guess he figured with that name he had to become a carpenter. We might be getting another bear candle here, or, uh, I'm sorry, flag. It's not it's not well developed, but I don't have any problem whatsoever having a clutter on my charts because they all mean something to me. You know, this this little white line means something to me. That's the upper standard deviation number one, D U up or I'm sorry, D U one. Deviation upper one. Um and um, by the way, this right here is is a target based on the average daily range, uh, and that's based on the twenty day uh, moving average of the ADR. We've been uh, we're so far we're at two hundred thirty eight uh, on the on, on today's average uh, um, the 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 ADR for today the average daily range is two thirty eight versus the twenty, which is two fifty three, which which is one that I, I, I focus more on, the longer term average there. Uh, getting to be a long video, but you know, if, if, we're, if we're sharing charts uh, and trades, really that's about what it has to be. I guess you could always zoom forward. Okay, let's see uh, if this looks like a... It's 10 a.m., so some people will use the first 30 minutes high and low, which would be where it is currently. And I've looked at the 15 minute and the 30 minute and the 60 minute high and low, uh, but I find that the 60 minute maybe is the more interesting for my needs. Okay, a red dot again, that means our volume is supporting a move down. Still stuck in that one minute high and low area right in there. So this could this be the uh, coming up to retest that open? If that be the case, then it, it could see a, a good goodly move down. Ten oh two AM Order Bell. Okay, now something I want to show you here is that as this price might continue on down, but that's okay. I'm just trying to show concept here. Let me get my magnifier. And I want you to see 
I, I can't point, I, when I use this magnifier, I can't use my pointer and show specifics within that little window. But you can see the separation on the guppies. I'm talking about the guppies now. Uh, between the 15 and the 30 EMA. And remember, the fast guppies are the 3, 5, 8, 10, 12, and 15 EMAs, which are the ones that are grouped on top, since this is a short structure. And then the long-term guppies are the uh, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and 60. But the, between the 15 and the 30, it's starting to widen. We, we call that an alligator mouth, going back to Dean Malone's days, oh gosh, 15 years ago or so, when I was in his room, trade room. Great, great mentor, great teacher. And so th that's an indication that this could be a you know developing, sustained move down. Plus, and importantly so, the... Um, the long-term um, uh, guppies. You know, I think I, I think I said that wrong. The the moving averages on the top, since it's in a short configuration, or the slow moving averages, they would be the the uh, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and 60. They're the ones on, on the top, and the ones on the bottom were the is, this, is the three, five, eight, ten, twelve, fifteen, and. But as you can see, them, them spreading, and, and most importantly, the uh, guppies on the top, the long-term ones, the slow ones, they're starting to uh, head down nicely and also have good separation between each other. So that's, uh, oh, look at this. Is, see, just, just according to clockwork. And what else? We got another uh, tweezer top right here, this magenta. We had that. We had the down arrow. We're still seeing proper volume. And uh, our TDI is looking good in all respects. Uh, the, the baseline, the yellow baseline, has fallen below the 50% level. The green price line has fallen below not only the baseline, but also the red signal line. And you can see the Bollinger Bands. And uh, especially when that green price line pokes its head out of the Bollinger Bands, as it did right here, you can see price seems to accelerate. All right, so I think... Uh, Rather than make this a day-long video, I think I'm going to wrap it up. I hope hope some of these things I showed you were helpful. Um, and uh, it's just uh, some of the ways that I trade. And um, I think that's about it for, for now. So I'm going to shut this down and maybe go take the dog for a walk. Oh, and before I leave, let me say again... Um, if you, um, I, I enjoy all sources of revenue that comes my way, including YouTube. So if you, if this is decent stuff, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. And as I always say, rather than just simply subscribe, uh, also toggle that uh, little bell thing that'll give you an up, uh, alert notice uh, whenever I post a new video. I appreciate your help. Thanks.